Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video, another video where I try to fix something. Now I'm not a professional in this, I just really like messing around and looking at things, trying to fix things when I've got no expertise in the particular device I'm fixing before, such as this one here. Never seen one before, never played with one before, but it's not working and I want to see what's wrong with it. So basically this was given to me by Mike from 1UP Gaming, he's got a store on eBay and Amazon and then if he has items that he that are not working and he can't fix, then he boxes them up and he sends them over to me. So with this one here, I've got a whole box of stuff and with this one it says TMNT, looks to start up then goes blank. So now I noticed earlier, because I googled this to see what year it was from and it actually says down here 1989, and I noticed that it says Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Now, I wasn't really into Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. I was probably a little bit old when, uh, when, uh, when, when they were out and about. But in other countries, it's called Ninja Turtles. And I think that they were called Hero in the UK because it was more marketable to the UK audience because they would think of Ninja as kind of like, you know, deadly fighting. While Hero's kind of like, oh, everybody loves a hero. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting because when I seen these online, they were all down as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So let's uh, plug the batteries in and see what happens. I can also see here it says R. Hackney. So you can see it's been etched in there. So obviously this belonged to R. Hackney back in, I presume, 1989. So it takes two AA batteries. Oh, there was life there. But there's nothing happening up on screen. So that's off, on. Right, I can't see anything happening up there. Now it did, oh, also look there, can you see? It looks like kind of wet, doesn't it, or something? It looks like there's air bubbles, as if there's a screen protector on here, but there is no screen protector. Right, so it did say, what does it say here? Looks to start up, then goes blank. So let's put the batteries in while looking at the screen and see what happens. Right, so here goes. Right, hold on now. Yes, good. Okay, there was a little bit of life there, so hopefully it's not going to be a LCD problem because seeing those bubbles there, I thought it might be LCD. I'm just going to do that again, taking the battery out, and here we go, I'm going to put it in. In fact, when I took the battery out, it lit up there. On. Right, so nothing's happening, but yet that's good because if it was an LCD problem, I'm taking the battery out again, put it back in. Don't know if anything happened that time. If it was an LCD problem, would it? Uh, mind you, what's all that black down the bottom? Oh no, that's just the uh, the picture behind. Uh, would it even flash up for a second? I don't think it would. I didn't make the noise that time. Let me put my finger on on. Interesting, and then it just dies away, doesn't it? Right, let's get this thing apart and let's see if we can uh, find out what's wrong with it. You know what? I'm quite looking forward to doing this one. I know the game at the end of it won't be very good, but I don't mean that badly. It's just obviously it's an old toy. It's not going to compare to anything that's modern. But I still think the fix itself might be might be interesting, especially now that there's life there. Because if it was just a broken LCD, then it wouldn't be it wouldn't be so interesting, would it? Because it wouldn't be fixable. Because I'm not going to buy another one of these to fix this one up. I wonder is it going to be some sort of capacitor issue where it's not uh, where it's only powering it up for a split second or something because the terminals here look absolutely perfect if you see there there's definitely no signs of corrosion in there at all oh right okay so this is the speaker here konami can i see anything that looks bad straight away no So this looks like a diode here, we've got a resistor. This looks like a crystal capacitor. Uh, yeah. Right, nothing's jumping out at me. That, that looks bad there, which is annoying. It does look like there's a little chip in here, but it looks like it's got uh, a blob of stuff, of stuff over it. You know those chips that are like covered with that black blob, so you can't actually do anything with them. I hope it's not that. Right, so this is it here. 
Oh, you know, I've uh, all my confidence has suddenly gone. I don't think I'm going to be able to fix this because it doesn't look like there's anything obvious on the components. Interestingly, all that kind of weird grease thing is on this part here. So this is just. Oh, is it just on the polar? Oh, I was just on the polarizing film. Right. Okay. All right. That should be able to be fixed then. Uh, the button's there, so now, how does this, how does this join to here? Is it one of those little zebra connectors? Hmm. Looks like, I'm wondering if that's been glued down onto it. I'm sort of looking here, it looks like there's a slight little line. Looks like there's a little bit of a line just on top here. There, can you see where it joins the circuit board? I wonder if that's been stuck down. Because I've come across these before, and basically it is like a zebra connector. And then on the game I had ages ago, all I did was peeled it off, and I just got a bit of IPA and with a cotton bud, you know, a Q-tip, and I just rubbed it across there, and that started working. But that's because the display wasn't working properly. It was like faint, you could only see a little bit, while here, I know it looks like the display is not working properly, but for a split second, you do see it all lit up. So it's not a case of that you can just see a tiny bit moving around. I don't think this is a problem with the LCD itself. Let's, uh, let's see if we can take, whoops, I just broke. That's annoying, I just broke the, uh, I just broke the speaker. I thought I could prize that out. I don't know whether that's gonna be repairable or not. But saying that I should be able to get one of those off something else. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my bench power supply and I'm going to get it set up on here and then I'm just going to put different pressure on this, uh, the screen just to see anything. What I also want to look at is I want to look at this chip underneath here, but to do that I do have to get access under here. So you can just see it's like a blob chip, so I won't be able to repair that at all, which is annoying. So I've got three volts here on these crocodile clips, so let's pop that there, and this one here. And now let's press a few buttons. It's not lighting up at all now. Do you have to have the polarizer on to see it? Maybe you do. Oh, there we go. Something flashed up for a second. Let me zoom right in. Oh, hold on. It lit up there for longer. See that? Remember, I've got no sound up now because I've just ruined this thing here. I'm just going to mess around with it for a while, see if there's anything to do with the pressure. Right, so when I keep my hand on that all clear, you can see it's coming up down here. So it's not, uh, it's not pressure related, look. Can you see it's still there now? Interesting, you do need a polarizer to be able to see it. There you go, look. And then it disappears when I do it that way. Look, there you go. Can you see it's inverted now, the colours? Oh, that's nice and clear there, isn't it? Right, look, it's, not, it's nothing to do with the pressure on the screen. I wonder if it's the chip. 
I wonder could one of those components be faulty? Maybe we should start measuring the components at the back, see if anything jumps out at us as faulty. Right, okay, I'm going to uh, turn off the power supply and I'm going to get my multimeter and start looking at these components, see if I can find anything. Right, okay. Uh, I suppose first of all, just make sure that these are linking to each other. Really, I need to do it on the other side to make sure the make sure these solder things are okay. As well, look, you can take out the little picture card here. You see, so you could sort of change the look of the game by changing that or maybe putting something more realistic in there. Yeah, there you go, 560K and it does say 560 there, so that resistor's probably okay. This is 100. Yeah, 99. Right, point six one, and then open the other side. Open. Point six two, so I've got to think those diodes are probably okay. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to fix this, you know. I'm wondering if it's going to be an issue with the chip itself. It's weird how it livens up for a split second, though. I'm just going to check this capacitor here for ESR. Right, so this one is. 16 volts 10 UF, so it should be 8 or less. Yeah, and it's uh, 1.42, so I think that capacitor is fine. And also, it's not testing, it's not shorting together. So these look like little capacitors as well. But I don't know how you test these ones. Then again, do these type go faulty? 104Y5V. I suppose anything can go faulty. Uh, uh, it's annoying. I was sort of hoping for more components because then it could have been a problem. You know, there was more chance of something being wrong apart from the chip. Really, I do need to get to the chip to then to get to all these traces underneath, but when I take this off, then that... Oh, here we go. Excellent. Okay, well, that has come off all right. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to test for continuity between... Do you see around the chip here, there is like contacts that I can go on to. So I'm just going to check between here and these contacts up here. But everything looks clean, it doesn't look like there's any dirt. Tested as much as I could test on that chip because remember there's sort of epoxy blob or whatever it is it does cover most of the contacts up the top there. I mean it all looks immaculate unless one of the components has failed. I don't really know what I'm going to do with this. I could try unsoldering each of them, but things like that little crystal here, I'm not going to be able to not going to be able to test that.
mean, out of all of them, the leg on the crystal does look a little bit corroded there. That bottom one. Right, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the capacitor and stuff out and just see if I can test them one by one. So I'll be just fast forwarding through it and then if I if anything's wrong obviously I will I will get straight back to the video. Okay, I've tested the components that I can test. So for example, this capacitor is showing okay. These are all tiny capacitors, and if you have a look, it says 10 PC, 20 PC. So from memory, I think that was, uh, I think that was, I can't remember now, was it 0.1? Whatever it was, it made sense. I can't remember exactly what it was on my meter, but it made sense that this was double this one here. This one was 0.1 UF, 0.1 microfarad. I'm trying to think, were they 10? nanofarad and 20 nanofarad or 100. I'm not too sure, I can't fully remember. Uh, these two you see me test earlier. The diodes were testing okay in circuit, but I did unsolder them just to check. And what I did is I have got this pack here with diodes in, and I knew I recognized that number because it's the same as the diode here, which is the 1N4148. And I uh, checked it against that one, and my meter's shown exactly the same against them. What I did is I just soldered this back onto the middle here. I don't know whether I've broken it now or not, but I've soldered it onto that plate. I'm not sure whether it's going to still make the noise or not. Uh, and then I just reflowed absolutely everything on here. I also took off this crystal here, but as far as I know, I've got no way of testing that crystal. I'll have to Google that one to see what's happening with it. And all these links and stuff, although they look a bit messy, they're all testing okay. So unless it's the crystal, the only other thing I could think is that it's the chip itself, which I won't be able to do anything about. This crystal, I can't see any kind of rating on it. It says KDS O or 0 F, I'm not too sure, but if you have a look there. There you go, KDS 0 F. I googled that and it's not coming up with anything apart from the fact that KDS makes crystals. So. I don't really know what to change that with if, I, if, if that was to be 40. So this is obviously, I think, something to do with timing, isn't it? But I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm going to, because I've reflowed everything now, I've touched every single bit of solder. I am going to put it back together. Well, I'm going to clean it first with IPA, then I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to clean this strip here, and I'm going to clean the strip here. But I don't think they're at fault because the LCD was, uh, was displaying before put it back together, I just want to see if it's doing what it was before or whether it's any better or it might even be worse now, I really don't know. So I'm just cleaning it up, but what I do find strange is, look, can you see there's like holes here and here? And here, well, if you look, those holes look like they're going straight through the traces because this one kind of looks like it goes down. I mean, why have they put a trace going over this way if it's not connecting up one of these two? And also, I mean, look at this one here. Look, can you see here? And uh, it looks like it's just been drilled straight through the trace. Again, we got one here, straight through. And look at this one here. I mean, why have this one coming up here if it's not being joined to this one here? I don't get it. I mean, I do know it goes, I suppose each of them do go around a different way. But then what does this one, if you have a look at this one here, for example, so it goes up to here. So it doesn't go here because of the hole. It comes down and it doesn't go here because of the hole. So what is the point of even having that one? Unless have the holes been put there on purpose to break certain traces. And I mean, if you look at this one here, I mean, they're all broken up here, aren't they? Really weird. That doesn't make any sense to me. Board for some reason is absolutely filthy. Look at all that. I'm going to have to give this another clean. Right, I'm going to see if I can trace the three volts around the place. Uh, right now, I'm thinking it is something with the chip. But I've got three volts going into it, and although I haven't got the screen on, I can still hear the music 
every now and then when I connect it up. So if you listen, doesn't doesn't happen every time. There, did you hear that? Boop, boop, boop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace it around the place, and uh, you never know if I could maybe bridge something in case there's a a bad track that I can't see. I mean, I haven't seen anything. It all looks all looks perfect, but. Uh, just in case there is a bad connection somewhere. So I'm going to put my volt, my uh, multimeter to volts, volts DC. And uh, for example, if I go across here and here, it should be three volts. There you go, 3.1. And now I'm just going to be moving around the place. So it goes to this one here. And I've still got three volts. Then it goes to this one. I've still got three volts. Then it goes to this one over here, which is a diode. Still got three volts. So it goes through the diode, so it should be coming up here then, shouldn't it? Or does it only come up here when I turn it on? So I have tested the diode. So now let me uh, let's see what happens if I turn it on. Right, so it's not going through the diode, is it? I wonder, has the diode dropped it? Should be going through the diode, surely. Wonder if I was to put three volts here, would it blow up the whole thing? So at the moment I've got three volts going into the diode here. This one. Uh, listen to that noise as well. Is that, is that a, a, an attempt at music? Hold on. Right, so that makes it reset. I tested that diode and it's testing okay, but does something else have to turn the diode? No, a diode just allows it through in one way, doesn't it? Why is it not allowing it through? Surely I should have three volts here. But then if I've got three volts here, what's the point of having the diode? Is it to drop it down? Let's actually see what the voltage is. So on here, go to here. No, it's nothing, is it? Try and turn it on. Need more hands. Let's try reset it, see if anything happens. No. And so I just swapped the diode out, but then again, I mean, it was, uh, it was testing okay. It was testing exactly the same as the diodes I've got. So from there, the diode, it goes to the speaker. From the diode, it goes to the speaker here. Then onto that part of the speaker. And then onto the resistor over there. And it also drops down to that diode and resistor there. I'm not sure, I'll keep messing around with it for a bit. Right, okay, starting to get somewhere. So look, I've just put the speaker back in here to make it a bit louder so I can hear it. Now, 
I've got the screen just back on and I'm putting pressure on with my thumb because remember it's not screwed in. Now do you remember this crystal here? Watch this. So when I put my finger across here, the crystal, look what happens. And take it off and it goes. I'm thinking maybe the crystal itself has gone faulty. Now, I don't know how to actually, uh, you know, control the game, but every time I touch over here, see, look, if I touch everywhere else, right, as well as that, I'm battling by trying to line the screen up perfectly and put pressure on it, which is hard, but, there, can you see? Now, I know it's all lighting up, but it's doing something, isn't it? And when I do press everything else, oh, there we go. Right, that is that capacitor that I did measure. Oh, yes, yeah, when I short that. And but that goes on to the crystal, doesn't it? I wonder how I can find out what crystal that is. Right, I'm going to spend a bit more time googling that information on that crystal, but I did it once already, I couldn't find anything, but I didn't spend very long. But look, it's definitely something to do with that, so I don't believe it's a faulty LCD. I don't even know if it is a faulty chip, I might think it might be all to do with this crystal. The only thing is though, it doesn't look like I'm actually playing the game, if you know what I mean. For saying that, my finger's not going to provide the same. All that's happening is I'm putting a slight short across it, I think. Yeah, let me look into that crystal more. Well, I haven't uh, looked up the crystal yet, but watch this. So I've got a screwdriver which is insulated, so obviously there's no power between here and here. I don't even have to use that. I could use a little screw if I wanted. But every time I just tap some metal object against this leg of the crystal. Look what happens, you see the screen goes crazy. So I'm thinking, this must work by just, uh, not sprites, I don't know what you call them, but basically it lights up in different things. So for example, if I press, I mean I don't even know how the game works, but let's say if I go down, all that's happening is different things are lighting up. So it must be, it must be the crystal that makes it flash up on screen. So for example, maybe it's flashing 100 times a second and I move it down and it's flashing down below 100 times a second. So, uh, I mean, obviously I really don't know what I'm doing, but the very fact it's doing something when I'm touching that, that shows me, that, that tells me that the LCD is definitely okay because look, pretty much everything's lighting up on there. So I really do think that it is the crystal, unless of course it's the chip that's controlling it all and it's not sending out the right, I don't know, like output to the crystal or something. I don't know. I'm going to look this one up online now. Right, I can't find out much about it at all. Uh, I looked on YouTube and there was a video that looked like it was going to be perfect. It was basically how to test crystals with a multimeter, but unfortunately it was in Hindi. So obviously I couldn't understand it and there was no subtitles, but he went across all of them. He had about four different crystals. Some did look like this and he went across them with continuity and uh, it, the meter didn't beep or anything. And obviously because I couldn't understand it, I didn't really know what he was, well, I didn't know at all what he was explaining. Now, uh, I've had a look around the house, see if I've got any crystals. I mean, I have got like, uh, have got a couple of quartz watches, but I don't really want to take the crystals out of them because they're, they're working. But I have got this, I don't know if you remember this from another video, the Mega Joy 2000. And with this one, it has got a crystal in. And this crystal is actually labeled up. So if I wanted to replace this one, it would be fine. Now, I'm assuming this is gonna be way too big. I think I'm gonna take a risk and just solder it in just to see if it will do anything different. I know there's gonna be loads of people now shouting at the screen because this might end up breaking it or it might be completely pointless. But really, I don't know what else to do. Uh, I've had a good close look at this and there is no markings on it at all apart from those markings there and they do not mean anything. Well, I mean they don't mean anything to me. Right, so you can see it says X tau there which is basically crystal, isn't it? And that's the symbol and that is what it says on it. K 
Let's block some lights. There you go. KDS and either OF or zero F. Look, there's nothing else on that at all. Nothing there. Nothing there. And nothing on top either. How weird is that? Because online it just says, you know, read the markings off the crystal, but uh, I can't. Obviously some of you are going to know what it is, so maybe I can do a revisit video on this. I think what I'm going to do is swap this crystal out just to see, just purely out of curiosity, if it will do anything. Right, in doing that I managed to lift the pad, so I'm just going to put a bit of solder on the uh, track going up to it and then hopefully that will, there we go, that will connect up the pad back up to it again. Just going to test the existing one just on continuity just to see if it shows up anything. Nothing that side. Alright, nothing there. No, it's not showing up anything at all. But then again, maybe, I, I presume that's probably normal anyway. Right, okay, let's pop the batteries back in this now and let's see if it's going to do anything different. Let's see if it's going to do anything. The screen's not on properly. Right, that's not making any sounds at all. Oh, here we go. Annoyingly, I can't put it back together properly because this crystal's too big and it gets in the way. Wonder if the crystal is at fault. No, same thing just when I'm touching across it. See, it might not be the crystal, it might be the chip. Okay, so it is the next day and I did actually finish up yesterday. I finished up the video saying that I don't know what's wrong with it, I've done my best, blah, blah, blah. If anybody knows it, I can do a revisit video. And uh, I was going to edit it up and then I thought I want to do more research into this crystal because it's really confusing me why it only says KDS, which I know is a manufacturer, and then OF, there's no frequency written on it. And F apparently stands for the month it was made, so I'm, I'm thinking this is a date code, so O must be maybe the last digit of the year it was made. And uh, it didn't really have anything else. And then I started looking at eBay and, and the uh, KDS crystals on there just had various other date codes and stuff. Looked exactly the same, but with other printouts on it. So I started to think, well, that's weird. And then I looked at RS and I noticed loads of them had this frequency here. And then I got to thinking, maybe like diodes, there isn't a huge amount. So you know, like with resistors and capacitors, there's just like huge amounts of them. But when I got my diode kit, it only has whatever it is, like the five most common diodes in it. So maybe with crystals, although you probably can get ones that resonate at all different frequencies, maybe that's not that common. So then I wrote down the frequency of all the ones that were in RS, and they're all coming up as, not all, but most of them are coming up as 32. 768 kilohertz. So then I started googling this and one of the things said why is this crystal used in so many products and basically the answer was it's used in near enough all products because it's dirt cheap. It's as cheap as chips is what it said because you can get them for a few pence because they're so mass produced because they're in clocks, watches and just about everything else as well. So that got me thinking. I do have uh, leftover bits of quartz watches. Now I know these are much smaller but if they're the same frequency will it work fine? Now I don't know if size makes a difference maybe the bigger the one the kind of bigger the uh, sort of the vibe you know the bigger the vibration but still it's worth a try isn't it? So what I've done is I've unsoldered this tiny little one here because I tried that other uh, crystal, but that was definitely a different frequency. But this one here, I don't know the frequency of this one. It has got writing on it. I haven't actually looked it up. 
but I'm assuming that because it's in a watch, that it's gonna be, sorry, I can't focus in on that, so small, but I'm assuming because it's in a watch, that it's gonna be the 32.768 kilohertz. Now, I should have just really got one of these out of a kind of, you know, pound shop watch. This is actually from memory out of, I'm pretty sure this is from uh, an Amiga from the 19, either 1970s or 1980s. So maybe this will be quite good quality, I don't know. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder it in and I'm gonna see if it makes any difference. And then, if it doesn't make a difference, maybe I will have to give up on it. Or, I don't know, let's, let's give it a go and see what, uh, see what happens. So I've got my soldering iron here. I'm just gonna temporarily just put it onto these wires here, because remember I broke the track, but that will be repairable. Now I looked up, apparently they're not polarity conscious, meaning that you can put them on either way around. And inside here, there's just a tiny bit of quartz. It's like a tiny tuning fork, and that's basically vibrating at, so if it's 32K kilohertz, that's, that's 32,000, isn't it? So it's moving 32,000 vibrations, I presume a second, which is a huge amount. Don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get this to melt onto here. Yeah, that's stuck. Let's try to do this. Remember, this is only temporary, just to see if it's going to uh, going to work or not. Okay, that's stuck. Let's just leave it at that. Now let's zoom out. Let's see if this makes any difference. And basically they're called a quartz crystal resonator. There was another one that's called quartz crystals oscillator. Don't know the difference between an oscillator and a resonator. Are they just different words of the same, meaning the same thing, or do they do different functions? I don't know. Oh, right, okay. Well, it did make a sound before. No, there's nothing there. Oh yes, there is, there is. Look, it says all the zeros. Game one. Look. Yes. It's got to hear game one, two, three. <laughs> Look at it. Hold on. It's, it's moving. He's moving. Oh my God. So it is, it is the crystal. Hopefully you can see that. Right, hold on. Right, what do I? Fire, what do I do? I've got 10 points. No, it dives, 30 points. Right, does everything work? Left, right, up, down, yes. And uh, these things are working. So, <laughs> unbelievable. So it is that little crystal that was faulty. I don't know what I did with the old, uh, there we go. That one there has gone faulty. So maybe it had been dropped, and maybe once these are dropped, maybe the crystal inside breaks, or maybe it wears out if it's moving at 32,000 uh, bits a second. Maybe they've only got a certain life before they die. Amazing, look at that. Sound off, on, yeah. Uh, so that turns the sound off. No, that's game. No, that's game select. So what would three be? Oh, faster. Okay, that's sound off and that's sound on. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Okay. I am going to put this back together. See if it turns off. All right. Yes, it does. Right. Let's put it back together and uh, solder this one on properly. Do you know what? I, that's unbelievable. I really didn't think that would work. I wonder, does it matter that I've replaced it with a, a smaller one? Maybe is it just more? Maybe the bigger ones are a bit cheaper because they're, you know, they're, there's less involved than having something that small. So maybe the small one will work absolutely fine. Maybe because it's from an Amiga, maybe this will be the the best timed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or Hero game that there is out there. Right. Let's uh, let's solder this back on.
that one Amiga part probably costs more than the whole handheld altogether. Do you know what? Now I know that those things go faulty, I'm gonna I'm gonna stock up on them because I've seen that they were on eBay for next to nothing. So I think I'm gonna buy like a five pack for a couple of quid or something. Right, let's try to solder this back in here. I'm gonna have to do a bit of a repair to this to this trace as well. Well, because the legs are very short, I'm just going to solder on the legs from this broken, broken one here, because that needs to be thrown away anyway. Right, so I've just extended the legs on that now, make it a bit bigger. Okay, so it is the next day and... Right, so you can see now that it goes through there. I've had to solder it onto this track here and I had to use a tiny little bit of wire. With this one, I just managed to use the leg and bend it up to here because the track, basically before the pulling in and out, can you see I've had to put the solder blob down to this bit here because uh, this, this little kind of uh, via where it goes through the board was also uh, also breaking as well. And then the other side actually looks okay. There you go, you can see I've just soldered the other legs onto it. So hopefully, hopefully this will work. I'm hoping this is gonna be a lasting repair, but if not, it can always be changed over for a bigger crystal. If you know the reason why they have different size crystals, if you could add that down to the notes because then I'll have a, a better idea of whether this is gonna last long term or not. If it's just generating a frequency, like a clock signal into the chip, then uh, I presume it doesn't really matter, maybe, if it's, uh, if it's the wrong size. Right, let's put this back together now. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of Captain Tape over here, and I'm also going to put a bit of Captain Tape over here as well, because this has had quite a few repairs on it. There you go, just a little bit of tape there, just in case it does wobble or drop a few times. I don't want it to snap off, because obviously it's not going to be as strong as uh, a proper one on there. A bit on the back there, and a little bit on here. Right, let's finally get this back together. Just have to give it a clean up now and then we'll do one final test. Hopefully it will be working like new again. Right, so that is it, all finished. And as you can see, it has come up very nice. It was already immaculately clean anyway. A few scratches on the, uh, the screen up here, the plastic screen, but it looks good, all the buttons are intact, and also, amazingly, the sticker is intact as well. Bearing in mind, 1989, I don't know whether that's when this particular one was made, it says 1989 at the back, but it could have been made you know, for the next 10 years after that. But uh, let's just say, let's call it 1990, we are talking about something which is 29 years old, which is uh, pretty amazing. Even if it was 25 years old, it's still looking pretty good. Right, okay, so... There we go, we've got a score there, so game select, one, two, so there's three game select. So what I'm going to do is, I just want to just fast forward it, I just want to see if when I get to, I think it's when you get to 100 points I've seen on YouTube, that then it opens up this kind of water bit down here, or this, well, you're in a sewer already, but this water bit, and then you can swim past these blades to get the key to save April O'Neil. So let me just zoom in, and let's see now if I can do this, but I will be just fast forwarding it. So basically, it's this key here to kind of hit this way, and this key to hit that way. So you have to jump and then you get 10 points, but you can't do those really low ones, they kill you, you see. So this might take quite a few attempts, but I will just fast forward through it. Uh, 90 points and I died. Right, let's try it again. See, look, can you see there's a key down here? So I think you have to get the key when uh, to rescue her over here. The swimming pool's open. Get down, get down. Yes, I'm swimming, I'm swimming, I'm swimming. Right, so how do I... Ah! 
Well, it doesn't matter. I got to the swimming pool, so that bit is working. So what a result. You, honestly, it's not the fact that I think the game's good. Far from it. I just think that it was such a nice fix to be able to find out what was wrong with it, especially when it wasn't just something like dirty contacts on the battery, you know, that to me was really interesting because that is a proper fix. Now I'm sure if you were good at this you would have pinpointed that nearly straight away, but I enjoy going through the testing process of the capacitors and the diodes and measuring them and, uh, you know, thinking it might be the crystal because when I put my thumb against it the screen started going crazy. And also now I've learned a little bit more about crystals as well and they're not quite as scary as I thought they would be because a lot of them are going to be the 32.768 kilohertz. So uh, yeah, I'm going to buy some of those up and hopefully now this will progress me in the future when I have other things to fix. I will now sort of, you know, not always think that the crystal is automatically going to be okay. Obviously they do fail just like other components as well. So uh, yeah, that is it. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Thanks so much. Bye now. I've got the key. I've got it. Now I have to get back. Ah, got electrocuted.